this PP9 battery came out of my old Grundig um, radio, antique radio. And it's sort of a little bit dead. When the radio is switched on, it's only 2.9 volts. This is the old PP9. And it's called a PP9 because it was originally called a power pack. All the Ever Ready batteries were called power packs. And this is a PP9. It's a 9 volt one. And so is the PP3, which is a bit confusing. But this is the big, big devil. And um, it was branded Ever Ready Silver. I, I ripped off the. Uh, the label but it was never ready silver and it had an expiry date of 0319 um, so and it's now mm, 0222 so it is well past its expiry date but I thought oh, let's have a look at this see what's inside it first this first surprise when I got the label off because I thought it was metal and it isn't. Um, these used to be metal cases with um, a cardboard insert at the bottom. But um, no, it's it's all plastic, which is actually better because if it leaked, it wouldn't uh, cause too much of a problem. Anyway, I sort of uh, took took the um, took this off and got a knife in there and went along each corner and I, it it opens up. Surprise, surprise, what's inside? A little bit of paper. And on that little bit of paper, Chinese. I thought this battery would be made in England. But there's a piece of random paper with some Chinese on it. Now I've heard that some of these batteries have got um, uh, alkaline cells in them and, and I was quite surprised this actually is a layer battery although I don't recognize it I don't recognize the color of that stuff they used to be black yeah there you go that's a, and another random bit of cardboard to pack it out so that's what's inside a, a PP9 these days what I want is the, um, I want these connectors. I'm going to replace all this with some, um, what's it, hang on. I've got some of these little um, AA pack um, holders, which I shall stick some energizers in. And they will fit within the pack. So if I stick six of these in, three sets of two, that should make up my uh, my nine volts, and it all fit nicely inside this uh, plastic box. So there you go. Well, I've got my three uh, battery holders, and um, I'm not going to cut the wires down because I think this is only going to be a temporary repair until I can get a proper six cell battery holder. But um, I'm just going to connect the uh, the positive of one to the negative of the other. Um, just solder them like that and slide this bit of sleeving up and do that a couple of times then I'll jam the whole lot into the uh, into the old battery case So I've got the three uh, battery holders all joined together and uh, joined to the uh, the cap there um, using the old wires. Um, I've left the wires long because, as I said, I might use these packs again. Yeah, these are just cheap, rubbish eBay battery holders, very cheap, and the wires come in and. They're just squashed in. Um, then 
they're not soldered, they're just they're just squashed into place. Well, I don't think those are going to be very reliable, so I am going to solder those connections. That was probably a stupid idea because this plastic melts like snow in the sunshine. But um, it is okay. And here we are, populated with the eight brand new energizers. Made in China, of course. Everything is made in China. Why can't we make anything ourselves these days? These are supposedly good to 12, 20, 31. I doubt if I'll even still be here in 2031. The original intention had been to stand these batteries side by side inside the thing, but quite by accident I found that if they fall down, they uh, they stay a bit more in place. So um, we can use the uh, can use the original cardboard. To, uh, to insulate them. And uh, I can't see what I'm doing through the camera. There you go. And we'll put another piece on top of that and then jam the lid on and that should work. A quick blob of Blostic all the way around the edge there. Stick it back together. Ooh, the smell of Bostic. Do you remember that? It's good stuff, isn't it? So we pop a little label on so that we remember what the heck we've done. So we bung the uh, the battery in the battery holder in this old Grundig radio and uh, we'll see if it works. Pull up the aerial, look at this good old analogue technology. And what better music could you have? Good bit of British music to show off a German radio. There's a oodles of volume. Not much on medium wave these days. God, I forgot this one's got short wave on it. But, um... When this radio was invented, there probably wasn't all that blooming racket on shortwave. Well, this video started off with me wondering what was inside a PP9 battery, and it ended up with me replacing the contents of the PP9 battery with dry cells. And you might be wondering why, and I asked myself that, because six energizer batteries plus three battery holders has surely got to add up to more than the cost of a PP9 battery. I know PP9 batteries are expensive and difficult to find these days. Um, the, the thing is you can't buy a PP9 in Tesco whereas you can buy these energizer batteries almost anywhere and there's usually dozens of these lying about the house we don't tend to have pp9s lying about the house and they always go at the most inopportune moment um such as on christmas eve you want to listen to the radio oh dear the battery's gone flat whereas if you've got a stock of these at least you can use your radio uh, if it runs off these and um you know, if push comes to shove, if you haven't got these and you've got some NICADs, you could use those instead. Because the radio works on quite a low voltage, so 
Okay, it's cost a fair bit to um to convert it, but at least it's future proof now. Oh well, that's it. Bye.